fact, I remember being in my apartment about 15 years ago, hearing about this thing called uh, Bitcoin. Had no idea what it was, looked into it, found out it was a decentralized digital currency. It was new to the scene. At that time, I want to say it was about 100 bucks a coin. I was poor back then, so I didn't really have that to my name. Uh, however, if I could go back and tell myself then, I would have said, put all your money into it. No, I'm joking. Uh, but what is this digital currency that's Bitcoin, and what is this push against central bank digital currencies? Good morning. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, joined in studio by Mark Hurley. Of course, we've talked with him in the past. He's a retired Air Force uh, colonel who uh, is really focused on a digital bill of rights. And Mark, thanks again for taking time with us. I do want to focus on the Digital Bill of Rights a bit, but do you mind if we listen to maybe something that Ron DeSantis had to say yesterday? Absolutely. Uh, so Ron DeSantis, of course, the governor of Florida, he uh, is moving forward with a measure that would block central bank digital currencies. Here is what uh, Ron DeSantis had to say yesterday during a news conference. While protecting against government surveillance over your personal finances, but our legislation shouldn't stop there. Given the continued increase in Chinese influence in worldwide affairs and increase in plans to adopt CBDC worldwide, our legislation also prohibits any CBDC issued by a foreign reserve or government-sanctioned central bank. This will ensure that any effort to adopt a worldwide digital currency will never occur in the free state of Florida. And finally, I'm calling on like-minded states uh, like Florida uh, to uh, adopt similar legislation uh, into their uniform commercial codes and to reject any changes to their uniform commercial code that would formally recognize a central bank digital currency. And I've already spoken with uh, Lieutenant Governor of Texas, who's the head of the, the Senate in Texas. I do believe Texas is going to do something similar to what Florida does. And if we can get a groundswell of states to say no, uh, we are not going to turn over this power to you. I mean, look, ultimately, cash is king. I mean, if you can hold it in your hand, you have power over that. The minute it's all digitized, somebody else is going to have control over that. And it's just a question of are they going to let you live your life? Or are they going to decide to do things uh, to circumvent uh, what you want to do? And think about what So, again, that's uh, Ron DeSantis yesterday talking about a central bank digital currency. And on the podium, he's got a uh, sign that says Big Brother's Digital Dollar. Uh, Mark Hurley, uh, tell us your thoughts uh, about a, a central bank digital currency, good or bad, or uh, is uh, Governor DeSantis on the right track here? Uh, Governor DeSantis is on the right track here. Uh, there are, are a lot of different types of currencies out there that everybody recognizes. You know, most of us are familiar with the fiat currency, you know, the U.S. dollar, you know, the Mexican peso, uh, you know, the German franc or French francs, you know, that type of thing. So um, I think we need to sort of step back a little bit and, and think about this historically. Uh, you know, we just are now recognizing uh, – uh, this morning, a lot of the tapes that came out with with you know Speaker Madigan, what have you, and that what happens is you know one party in power will abuse your rights is basically what it comes down to. So, what Governor DeSantis is saying is, hey, we do not want a one world currency, uh, whether digital or otherwise, right? Uh, we want the U.S. dollar to remain strong, right? Um, but he is not opposing digital currencies altogether. He's opposing a central bank digital currency because he's concerned about things that are coming out of the World Economic Forum. He's concerned about uh, perhaps, you know, if China became, you know, the lead nation around the world rather than the U.S. being the lead nation. Um, and so it's important to look at, well, exactly what did China do, for instance? So China at one point, that's where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, – uh, cryptocurrencies were established originally, and then they uh, banned uh, all the exchanges, and they pushed all the exchanges out, and now we just saw two weeks ago where they're actually going to establish one exchange within Hong Kong. Uh, so again, they're, they're centralizing their power, um, and they're, they're centralizing their digital uh, yuan, basically. And so... Um, so all the all the Chinese people will need to use that currency. 
Um, and we saw what they did during COVID with complete shutdowns, right, and, and complete control. And that's the concern that I think a, a lot of us are, are talking about now. Um, it's important, I think, for the audience to realize that um, there are a lot of us that would rather stay with the U.S. dollar as it is. But there are so many efficiencies with digital currencies in general that I'm afraid that horse has already left the barn. Right, um, you have you can instantly tra transfer large amounts of so of, of money. Um, it's at a lower or cheaper cost. You avoid overdraft fees, and more importantly, you can help underserved or unserved areas. And and for instance, I did a project with um, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, in which we looked at Haiti, and Haiti always gets hits with earth, earthquakes and with hurricanes. And what happens is you get private monies flowing into the country, but they never make it to the people. Or you get uh, world uh, governments sending monies down, but it gets you know held up in, in corrupt politicians' hands in Haiti, right? So uh, with the advent of the cell phone, however, you can do direct uh, uh, payments and direct orders. And so IBM has developed a blockchain technology that provides supply and it verifies all along the way. So what that means is, you know, a person who has a cell phone in Haiti can order uh, water if they need water or construction materials to rebuild their house or, or food or whatever they need. And it can be verified all through the transportation process on where it's located. And you can actually donate directly to that person. So you would say, well, that's Haiti. They're a special instance. Well, no. In the United States, you have between 18 and 22 percent of the population that is either uh, underserved in banking or just has no capability of banking, but they have cell phones. And so I think this technology is going to really help us in the long run that some type of digital currency is possible. But then the alternative to that is you don't want all the control in, in one organization's hands under a central bank digital currency because then uh, that power in one hand tends to corrupt and becomes abusive to the individuals. Do you think the state of Illinois, uh, and I know that they've looked at uh, digital currencies and the blockchain technology and trying to foster that uh, technology in Illinois for a variety of things, be it you know title loans and 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 transfers of mortgages and whatnot. They're just they're looking more into it. Uh, but do you think that the state of Illinois should do similar to what uh, Florida is doing, uh, what uh, South Dakota is doing, what Texas may be doing? Should they also include a a prohibition on um, mandating a central bank digital currency? Uh, I think that that each state has what's called a uniform commerce code, okay, and they have they vote on how they want to set up and structure that code. Okay. There are advisory groups that tell you how to uh, work that code so, or, or what to legislate. And, and so far, Illinois has gone down the proper path, right? Uh, no real negatives here. But what happened this last year is there, were, there was a big push to allow central bank digital currencies to occur and to outlaw all cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin. Um, and this gets into the argument with the SEC over is a cryptocurrency a security? Uh, uh, the U.S. has already passed a law saying Bitcoin is actually a commodity. Uh, so that's a different you know, animal. And, and unfortunately, SEC has been blocking the advances of cryptocurrencies on the private side. And, and partly because there just are no standards at, at the federal level for us yet. Uh, and that's holding back investors at this point. So, but to get back directly to your question, so the federal government is, you've got people like Senator Haggerty and Senator Scott and Senator Briggs, right? They're all looking at this from an innovative standpoint and how do we protect the consumer as this innovation goes through? And that's a positive outlook on things. So at the state level, what we have to make sure is that they don't prohibit uh, or that they do prohibit central bank digital currencies, but don't prohibit a private uh, 
digital currency of some sort, uh, and and perhaps multiple digital cur- digital currencies, uh, cryptocurrencies, um, and we should say to the audience, um, each cryptocurrency has an ability to only function in one area, and it is guided by whoever holds that cryptocurrency. That's very different from Bitcoin, in which you can do things anonymously and and basically you're capped at, you know, you won't get into these inflation issues right. where, you know, they, they're not going to be able to print Bitcoin forever like they I do. I think there's only the like market. 21 million that are ever going to be mined and we're at like yeah. 19.3 million or something like that. Uh, so that's another aspect of it. Uh, Mark Hurley with us. He is a retired Air Force colonel. I want to talk more about uh, how this plays into the Digital Bill of Rights and how exactly uh, we can get even more deeper into those issues. We're going to have a short segment next. Stay tuned. It is Springfield's Morning News here on W. M A Y now seven fifty one from Culver's West on Wabash. It's time to apply at Culver's West on Wabash. My in studio guests Mark Hurley, a retired Air Force Colonel with the Air National Guard. Uh, you've focused a lot in the conversations we've had about uh, a digital bill of rights and digital currency uh, playing into that to a degree. Uh, but uh, there's also the looming threat of uh, centralized power globally. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Uh, The consequences there. Yeah, there there are clear national security issues here, uh, particularly if if folks like the World Economic Forum or BRICS, for instance, want to move towards uh, a one world currency that is not the US currency. Uh, And so, what will happen in a time period like that is you'll, you'll see the fall of the U.S. dollar and you'll see our standard of living basically fall and we won't be as, as creative or inventive as we have in the past and, and our lives will have completely changed. So our goal really is to try and develop a, a strategic plan uh, for digital assets in general. And remember that this is our property, right? We need to start treating it as property, that, that data is our property. Right, and there are certain free speech associated with that, and then more importantly uh, than all of that is that our privacy should not be infringed upon. And once you get large governments, you know, government bureaucracies, when they start monitoring individuals, uh, it, whether it be your finances or otherwise, without consent or notification, that becomes a problem because then they can start controlling what you spend your money on. Uh, for instance, you, you may, if your grandkids live out of state, you won't be able to go visit them whenever you want. You won't be able to donate to your favorite politician or your favorite charity. You won't be able to fly wherever you want to fly to, you know, on vacation. Uh, you won't be able to buy gasoline for your car, um, things of that nature. And so we, that's the goal is to avoid that heavy bureaucratic hand. And so to do that, you really need a strategic plan in place like the European Union has already done. And then uh, we also need, you know, a digital bill of rights in place and decentralized finance laws need to be written, all of that. So I think that there's definitely more needs to be done, more conversation to have about a digital bill of rights. Mark Hurley, retired Air Force colonel uh, with the Air National Guard, greatly appreciate you taking the time and we'll talk again soon, okay? Thank you much. It is Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY now, 8 o'clock. Stay tuned, much more coming up.